Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of On the Road with the Square Chuckle Cafe. I am your hostess Daria, but this is always is Beth, well, she sort of has to be because she's the driver. Um, don't mind my husband in the back seat there, he's trying not to be seen on camera. It's not your show, I'm not mine. <laughs> but you can see his show where? On YouTube, of course, and everywhere At else. At Wild Dream Matches in Masters at yahoo.com yeah, at youtube.com yeah anyway Where too early in the morning folks just watch youtube okay googling dream matches jazz and sun boom all is there all right. enjoy all right now with that being said last week beth and i had the pleasure of attending wwe smackdown live when they were in providence and if you remember it was the episode where Kofi Kingston was attacked by Dolph Ziggler, um, as well as, what was the other noteworthy thing of last week? Big noteworthy thing? Yeah. Uh, Xavier got, no, Big E came back and Big E got attacked backstage. Oh yeah, that's right. All right, well, let's rewind it to earlier in the day. Now, I don't, I used, I do go downtown to make it a point to see the wrestlers come in and stuff. I very rarely go up to meet people and stuff, but today, that day, I decided, yeah, why not? Let me go ahead. We went downtown, and at first, we were observant from the deck above because we parked in the garage. We looked down, saw everybody, and we decided, hell, let's go down. Good thing we did, too, because some of the first people we bumped into as we were waiting downstairs, one of our very good friends and a former guest of ours here on the show, Oni Larkin. Oni still rules. Yep, Oni still rules. We, of course, know him as... You can go back and want, listen to one of our former shows. Um, listen to the podcast titled Biff Music Live. You'll know what I'm talking about. So it was great seeing him. He came in with Drew Gulak. And surprisingly, him, Humberto Carrero, Drew Gulak, and Heavy Machinery walked to the arena. I mean, what did you think when you saw Humberto walking in? Because you were the one who spotted him first. Wow, he's tall. Mm-hmm, yeah, very tall. <laughs> and, oh, but congratulations on his engagement, by the way. Um, so... He was, we knew he was going to be there for 205 Live. So we're Oni and Drew Gulak, because they're part of the roster now. But it Hilarious was just, thing, though, there was this one guy that was, like, sitting near us, that was, like, near us and stuff. He brought a lawn chair, was sitting there all comfy and everything. Gets up. Takes a picture with Oni. Drew Gulak took his phone and took the picture for, for him. Drew told him that the person he'd just taken the picture with was Drew. Nice. And I guess the guy believed him because he was like, awesome. Um, uh. He was going on and on about how he got his picture taken with Drew Gulak. And we were like, no, you didn't. You got your picture taken with Oni Lorkin. Your picture was taken by Drew Gulak. Mm -hmm. And then there was another guy. Who was it that pulled up that he was in NXT, but the guy didn't know who we were talking about, but we knew who it was? Um... I know, it's like one of those things where, I, like, I know, I remember who it was. Too early and not enough caffeine. Yeah, that's true. But <laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. There's one guy I come running up. Oh, wait a minute. It was Oni. Yeah. It was Oni. He says, who are those two? It's like, Oni Larkin. He's, it's like, Oni Larkin. And he's, like, standing there with a blank look on his face. I'm like, do you watch NXT? No. Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's like he's on, and we were like, he's on NXT and he's on 205 Live. Oh, okay. What? <laughs> it's like apparently if you're not on Raw and SmackDown, they don't know you. Which is stupid because we all know that NXT at least is definitely some of the better talent. And honestly, especially after getting to see it, see it live last week. 205 Live is so underrated. It is. If you get a chance to really check it out, it's got a lot of great talent on there. And we'll get to that in just a moment. 
So we saw other wrestlers driving in. We saw um, other members of 205 Live. We saw Aria Davari. We saw the Singh Brothers. We, we saw, saw Aria Davari and Tony Nice, who had literally just wrestled two days before against each other on Money in the Bank drive in together. Yes, folks. Mm -hmm. Kayfabe is dead. Alright. Now, who are some of the ones you were lucky enough to um, get pictures with and talk to? Well, obviously, Oni, Mike and Maria, and yes, I selfied with Elias. I do not walk with Elias, but I selfied with him because I could. Yes, she did. I of course got ha I of course was happy because I was able to get my pictures with the two guys I was hoping to see that day. The first one of course being Oni Larkin and the second one being that of one Matt Hardy. So it was great seeing him and seeing him. He looked great, recognized me, gave me a nice smile before he took the picture. Told him to say hi to Rebby and the kids for me. He said he would. But here's a funny story. Apparently our truth has another challenger waiting for him in the wings. Isn't that right, Beth? Yes. Yes, he does. Because they have not specifically said that the 24-7 title can only be held by a man. Yes, but as she made the challenge to R-Truth as he was driving in, who did you later find out was in the car with him? Roman. <laughs> as in Reigns? <laughs> uh, duh. What other Roman is there in WWE? You never know what people out there, if that guy didn't know who Oni Larkin was. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, our adventures outside lasted for a while, and then we went to grab something to eat. We While had, we were grabbing something to eat, we actually saw Jamie Noble just casually walking around shopping at Providence Place Mall. And isn't it kind of weird how he's casually shopping and no one knows who he was? Right? <laughs> it was just one of those things that was just like, um... We know who he is, but we left him alone. Exactly. He was, he, was on, he was on his time. Yeah. But we went back to the arena, headed for the show. Uh, and we had, I mean, we had some pretty far up seats, but they were well enough that we were able to have a good time without anyone bothering us. And the show itself, I have to say, was a lot of fun. One of my highlighted moments was, of course, seeing the... Fatal Five Way on 205 Live, which featured both Mike Canellis and Oni, two guys that we remember from the New England scene here, which I thought was really awesome. And then, of course, Kofi getting pretty much a homecoming welcome because Kofi is originally from the New England area. He started off with Chaotic before signing with WWE. And, um, oh, the other highlight was the fact that through the during the backstage segment, watching our truth trying to hide himself because he's the 24-7 champion. Though, Carmella's matchup against Mandy got interrupted with the fact that you can't exactly hide if you're a six-foot black man wearing a blonde wig and, glass and sunglasses. And then having said title around your waist. Might as well have a sign on the back of you that says, Pin me now. So yeah, we saw a caravan of stars running out, trying to chase after our truth including Drake Maverick, Noam Dar, um, Matt Hardy, the B-Team, and uh, there was a couple other people too, but... Oh, there is one thing we want to ask anyone out there who's watching. If you were there last week, one person drove in wearing a black cowboy hat and he had his hair pulled back. Unfortunately, that's when we were up in the garage looking down, watching everything. We weren't able to see who it was. If you knew who it was, comment below because we're still trying to figure out. We first thought it was Aleister Black, but we were wrong. But then like five minutes later, Aleister Black drove in with his lovely wife, Selena Vega. Exactly. And we noticed him from a distance because as he was driving, he had a heavily tattooed hand. And so we knew it was him. So if you knew who it was, comment down below. Or send us a tweet at SCC Podcast. Who was it that drove in with a cowboy hat, black shirt, and his hair pulled back? Because we're still trying to figure out. I'm still trying to figure out how Noam Dar stuck in without us seeing him. Um, well, let's see. First of all, when Nice and Arya Davari came in, 
you could see there were two other people in the back seat, but the back seat had slightly darker tinting on the windows, so you couldn't quite make out who it was. Yep. Not well, to we... mention, let's see, uh, well, we, we didn't know that Jack Gallagher was there because we didn't see him. Right. And he was in one of the matches on 205 Live last week. Yep. Here's a, you know, here's funny. We both saw Drew McIntyre drive in with Jinder Mahal, who was one of the other guys who was chasing our truth. Why didn't it dawn on either one of us that he was going to do something on SmackDown when we knew he was a Raw star? <laughs> because I was just drinking in that long, that tall, cool glass of scotch. I got you on camera saying that, you know. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm single. But, I can say whatever I want. I know. But it was just so funny how seeing Drew pull up, it didn't even occur to me that something would happen, which it did. That was the other thing. Roman getting attacked by Drew at the end of the show. So... So overall, overall for me, I find that SmackDown is a better show in general. But seeing it live was just a hell of a lot of fun. Our dark match main event was the Iconics versus the Kabuki Warriors, Kairi Singh and Asuka. Which unfortunately ended in a no contest because, no, not no contest, um, disqualification. I didn't exactly see what happened, but I know... Technically, the Kabuki Warriors got the victory, but because it was by a disqualification, the titles did not change hands, as was evidenced by the fact that last night we had Nikki and Becky versus the Iconics, and the Iconics still had the freaking belts. Right. All right. But um, overall, like I said, if you get a chance to, SmackDown was so much fun. Um, thankfully, we can go back and watch it either on Hulu or on the network. At both SmackDown and 205 Live, which was a lot of fun, and I can't wait till they come back. I don't know when that's going to be again, but I know it will be soon. Oh, and I want to give a special shout out to my sister, who was lucky enough, her and my brother-in-law were able to go see AEW's Double or Nothing this past weekend, and from what I understand, they had an awesome time, and lucky duck, she got to see a certain um, lunatic pop up at the end of the show if you know what I mean we'll talk about that on the next episode which will be an audio show it'll be either Thursday or Friday I haven't decided when yet so keep a listen for that as we start winding down here so thank you all for tuning in this early in the morning I know kind of not so caffeinated as we should be but we can't wait to talk to you guys again and be sure to check us out at New England Fan Fest it's happening next Friday from Crown Plaza Hotel in Warwick, Rhode Island. New England Fan Fest All Access Entertainment. Access spell with two X's. You can get your tickets there. I'm sure to check it out. You get to see such superstars such as Kelly Kelly, Greg the Hammer Valentine, Bruce Bar Beefcake, Honky Tonk Man. Uh, just announced earlier this week, Brian Malonis will also be in attendance as well as the vendor guest. And our vendor guest will be Sizzling Sand Style, so be sure to check that out. New England Fan Fest, Crown Plaza Hotel, Warwick, Rhode Island, June 7th and 8th. And we hope to see you there. New England Hall of Fame will be on the, the 7th, and the Fan Fest will be on the 8th. So be sure to check out our table. We'll have merchandise. We'll have stuff to sell, and we'll be doing a live broadcast. So be sure to see you then. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Daria. She's Beth. And we'll see you all later. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night.